Hello and welcome to our podcast at Get Legally Speaking. Our legal conversation today will be on domestic violence during the COVID crisis. This is our part two of this podcast, so please do listen to our part one. I am joined by Miss Freya Rowe from Thomas More Chambers in London. Freya is an outstanding senior family law barrister who is passionate about her efforts with earned credit from the High Court and County Courts. She has extensive experience in domestic violence cases and she has conducted many seminars setting out useful crossovers between family and crime. Thank you so much for joining me, Freya. Thank you very much for having me, Hattie. I'm really pleased that we're recording this uh, part two podcast, Freya, as I was mentioning to you before we pressed record, because this issue at the moment is very, very, very apparent to a lot of people and of, of different ages, different backgrounds, different, doesn't matter whether you're male or female, um, you could yeah. be a child in a household experiencing this. And some of the um, some of the points that I wanted to just quickly make to our listeners before we go on to discuss um, our questions is, I mean, the, again, I say the BBC reported in April last year that the domestic Call, abuse calls were up 25% since the lockdown was implemented on the 23rd of March. Um, the government has provided another £3.1 million for services to support children who witnessed domestic abuse in their homes during the crisis. That's come up yes. very recently. Um, yes. And this is not just a woman's problem, but indeed one that society must understand and confront. And I mean, the latest statistics on this where I read that on average, the police receives 100 calls per hour on domestic abuse. These are yeah. all really, really key and important factors to why we want to um, do these sorts of podcasts. So let's talk about the various behaviours that can fall into being classified as domestic abuse, Freya. Because yes. you know, we've said this before, haven't we, where people just assume that it's because you've been hit or pushed around really yes. violently. But let's talk about these various behaviours, please. Well, um, that's right, Hattie. I mean, there, there um, are quite a lot of misunderstandings about domestic abuse, and um, that's become very apparent during all of the parliamentary debates which are going on at the moment due to the domestic abuse bill um, going through Parliament, um, where a lot of MPs have started to speak up about the abuse that they've suffered. And um, it has become a very important issue um, because it, the domestic abuse in this country is so bad that people really do need to start to take notice of it and to understand it and not to dismiss it as yet just another uh, mother being killed by the husband because she just couldn't, uh, she couldn't be bothered to leave or uh, something of that nature. There are different types of domestic abuse. Um, the Met Police website is a very, very good one and it sets it out for people if they have any... Um, misunderstandings about what domestic abuse is, metpolice.co.uk. Essentially, <clears throat> there are six main types of domestic abuse. The first one is controlling behaviour. And that, that's, um, that can include things like isolating um, the victim from sources of support, family, friends. I think friends. that goes on, if I may say so, Fred, that goes on a lot more than we think. You know, where someone's it saying, does. you're not going out, you're not seeing that friend. Yeah. It's You're very, not very common. Yeah. Yes, um, and it's very different to someone who genuinely just wants to please their partner and, and um, stays in the odd night to, to keep their partner company. This is very controlling behaviour where, and it's not um, the, the, the woman or the, um, the, the victim just being stupid. Um, it's um, quite complicated. Um, they, they are very gradually um, stopped really from being able to do anything that they really want to do. Um, they often um, don't have any sort of independence. Um, their behavior, everyday behavior becomes completely regulated. It's not just about that they're told what not to wear um, or what to do or who to see, which is bad enough, but often people are actually stopped from their having an ability to work or to study and things of that way. And the controlling behaviour takes many different forms. It can be very manipulative behaviour. It can be sort of blackmail, emotional blackmail type of behaviour. It could be threats. Um, it could be a sort of form of gaslighting. If anybody remembers, there's a very old film about gaslighting um, where the woman is um, almost driven mad 
because they start to doubt <clears throat> everything that they thought and believed well, I think in. That's um, another common behaviour that we see, isn't it, in somebody that's that's conducting the abuse, where they make the per the, the person seem almost very silly. You know, you're stupid. Yeah, they they you know they they belittle that person. They make that person believe that they are in the wrong. So they're not yeah. a victim. They are in the wrong. They are to blame. Um, you know. Well, that's and, right. I mean, the, the one thing all of these different forms of domestic abuse have in common is that that is to do with power and control exerted over the victim. And the um, so controlling behaviour is an important one. Um, coercive behaviour is another very um, important one that's misunderstood by a lot of people. Um, you, you, you know that Rosie Duffield, the MP, um, talked in Parliament um, when they'd been discussing the domestic abuse bill in October of last year. She actually cried during her own speech. Yes. She yes. received a standing ovation because she was talking about the effect of coercive behaviour by her ex-partner. Um, because it's, um, I mean, all of these types of domestic abuse often overlap um, and lead to other forms of domestic abuse. Um, it's very often the start of what can become physical abuse. Um, people start off with controlling behaviour, coercive behaviour. It can involve things like threats, uh, blackmail, assault, humiliation, intimidation. Um, the person, it's basically done to punish or frighten the victim or harm the victim. And it has very, very severe effects. The fact that Rosie Duffield was still crying um, quite a long time after all of this in her speech shows the effect it can have on the victim. And um, it's taken very seriously now by the police. The third form is, is, is more obvious to understand uh, on some levels, physical and sexual abuse. Um, clearly that's an act of aggression and violence um, on the person. Um, it, it, sexual abuse can in, include forced sex. People often think if they're married or in a relationship, there's no such thing for to sex. consent. Yes, yeah. well, that, 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 that is actually a really key point. And I just want to make that absolutely clear to our listeners. Even if you're in a consented relationship in a marriage, if you don't wish to consent to that sexual activity at that time and it's forced upon you, then that is a form of sexual abuse. It is yes. not, it's not permitted in the eyes of the law for somebody to sexually be with you if you are not permitting for that person to do so, even if you are married. I think that's really important because we Very have this, important. we have as a society, I think this idea that, it, it, and in certainly in some cultures as well, um, certainly, you know, in, 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 in some areas of my own culture, um, where if you're married, then, then the woman is expected to do, or, you know, what, what needs to be done in yes. the bedroom regardless yes. and if she says no and it still goes ahead she's got no basis to stand up and say that shouldn't have happened and actually it's a form of abuse i think that's this is a, that's a really it's key important. point yes and of course it's sort of it's acting as if the person's feelings don't matter at all you know it's very dismissive and belittling of the victim and um, then you hear the things where the the perpetrator can turn around and say no one's going to believe you because yes, it's only absolutely. yourself and that person there. Well, who's going to believe you? You're known to be a liar. You're known to be weak. You're, yeah. um, you know, not a, not a strong male if it's happening to a male, or you're, you know, one of the silly females in the in the society that we live in or family that we live in. So there, there's that torment that could come yes. with it as well. Well, that's right. And it's very often um, part of other abuse because. Um, it's, it's all part of the sort of making the victim feel as if their feelings don't matter, that they don't matter. And um, they don't have a say in this relationship. They just don't have any, any power at all in the relationship. Um, and um, it's part of the sort of psychological impact on victims where they start feeling they deserve this type of treatment and they yeah. normalise it. They think it's actually normal. And, and they start course, making excuses for the perpetrator sometimes as well, Freya. It Absolutely, saying, and, you know, of course, he was right, people, she was right. Yeah, well, that, that's right. And, and people often make excuses to themselves. If they love somebody, they often make excuses to themselves about their bad behaviour because they don't want this to be the end of the relationship. They don't want to think the person's capable of these awful things. Um, and so um, it is often part of other abuse. Um, fourthly, there's emotional or psychological abuse. Um, that very often includes things like verbal abuse, name calling, um, people often repeatedly being called fat and hopeless and, and other worse um, names, 
um, blaming the person for everything that ever goes wrong, shaming the person into <clears throat> sort of thinking they're completely hopeless and um, unimportant, um, isolating the person um, from their friends and family. I mean, that's quite complicated. It's not just a, a question of suddenly somebody is um, stopped from seeing their friends and family. Very yes. often the uh, perpetrator talks to the friends and family and is part of that isolation. They often make up lies about the person. Um, they off, or they, they may even tell family truths about the person, but things that really they shouldn't be told about the person. Yes. So it ends up yes. isolating the, fam the person away from the family. They may encourage <clears throat> the um, victim to drink or to take drugs and then um, talk about them behind their back to the family and um, dismiss them um, as, as somebody who's an alcoholic and, or drug addict. And the family may believe the um, perpetrator and actually it becomes quite complicated as to why people become isolated from friends and family sometimes yes. friends and family just get fed up with seeing this awful abuse and the person not seeming to be able to do anything about it and they sort of give up on the friends yes. and family so, so um, i've told so, you why, why haven't you left him yeah, why haven't you, you left her yeah it's been, been going like on for years them. you know if you're going yeah, to put up with it then shut up sort of thing so they just sort of close down on them um, and it's very important in those situations try as a, as a member of a family or friend to try and keep some sort of communication alive whatever it is even if it's just the odd email or Facebook or phone call or something so there is some communication um, and of course <clears throat> emotional psychological abuse can include intimidating and controlling behavior it all overlaps and then fifthly there's honor-based abuse um, obviously there's it's a complete anomaly to call it on a based abuse, but um, it's basically threats or, or threats or violence by family or uh, wider family very often or the community. Um, cultural religion is often used as the um, is, is the is the um, basis. Of it it. But of course, it's not an excuse. Um, it is a crime and does need to be taken very seriously. Uh, there are lots of other types of um, domestic abuse, but um, th things like uh, genital mutilation and things like that is considered to be a form of domestic abuse. But th those are the, the ones I think to think about today. Um, and I think also think, think about some of the warning signs to people, um, because um, very often um, victims won't come forward and tell people straight out that somebody's hit them or someone's abusing them. There are some warning signs which I think are quite useful for people to look out for. There's not just unexplained <clears throat> bruises and marks um, and depression and upset and things. Which well, I mean, I think one of the one of the if I may say so, one of the fundamental things is if somebody is making you feel really, really upset, if they're upsetting you, if they're hurting your feelings. I mean, physical is 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 a physical so that nobody should ever. And we've said this before, lay their hands on you. Full stop. There yeah. is no reason, no excuse, no anything. But, but if somebody is emotionally, continually upsetting you, making you feel sad, you know, worried, anxiety, you know, these yeah. are all feelings that, you know, matter in these situations. Yeah. You can't well, just say, oh, well, it's normal for, for, for people to make, you know, argue in a relationship and make you feel like that. None of that. I mean, yes, of course people have disputes. Of course you have the, the upset. I mean, you can't, I don't think, go through life with a partner yeah. without those sorts of things. But yeah. there is a degree of that. And if well, this is right. something that is continually that way of life for you and fear, fear, yes. I think, is a really key part of abuse, isn't it? Freya, it's where it. if you are fearing anything because of another person that you are in a relationship with, that it, alarm bells should be ringing. Yes. What is going on is a form of abuse, could be a form of abuse, because you shouldn't yeah. be feeling fear from anybody that you're in a no, relationship well, that's with. That's right. That's absolutely right. Um, and um, in, in terms of some of the warning signs, that's right. If you feel that you're much you know you're you're regularly being upset by this person and belittled by them and things of that nature uh, then you should have more red flags being um flagged up um in terms of other people noticing um very often they find that they if you suddenly start losing your friend your communication is being severed between your friend um that that may be a sign of domestic abuse they may withdraw from school or education or from work. That can be a sign of abuse. Um, if you witness them being criticized regularly, um, 
And this is if you're the person from the outside, potentially looking at somebody that's your friend or your family member going through this sort of thing. Yes, that's right. And, or hear some form of abuse or, or um, see text messages or anything like that, which are quite abusive. Um, in in honour-based um, abuse, very often there's criticism of the victim for being too Western, um, for wearing clothes which are too Western, <clears throat> or makeup and things of that nature. And there yes. are often restrictions on their movements. Um, they find it difficult to leave the house or to attend social events and things like that when perhaps they hadn't previously. Or they're being chaperoned a lot. If you notice they're being chaperoned a lot, um, and on a base violence, obviously that would be family um, members usually. Um, but obviously in domestic violence situations, quite often the person just is hardly ever on their own. It's almost impossible for you to see them on their own because the perpetrator is very often there making sure that they're, they're not being um, talked about and that this abuse yes. is going to be talked about. And then obviously the onset of depression or real sadness in somebody who's usually a um, very happy person and they seem to have um, deteriorated during the course of a relationship, then that can be um, a very important sign as well. I mean, what, what I will say there, uh, Freya, is that yeah. I have seen, I've, I've seen of and read of so many cases where domestic abuse victims have just covered it up so well. And yes. you would never imagine, you know, where you hear that, where you read that story or you hear that story or you know of that person, you think they were being abused, really? Because they've become a master at just playing the, you know, the not playing the victim, if you like, and, and covering yes. it up. And that, you know, does happen, doesn't it? We, I mean, it happens a lot. And particularly, you know, people are very ashamed and um, domestic abuse happens to people who are very, very well educated, very intelligent. Yes. Um, very successful um i mean we will all know somebody who is suffering or has suffered domestic abuse sadly it's about a third of women at least that's have, a big um, number it's that's a very a big number, number. something like 30 percent at least of, of they're, they're the people who report it so of course um we will all know um people who who have suffered it or are suffering it and um they're very ashamed um, about admitting to any form of abuse. Um, because it, it also, um, you know, if you are a successful person, in, if you are a successful person in your career, in your job, or you are very well educated, and you think, God, you know, that's really embarrassing. It's, it's it, like you say, it makes yeah. you feel, you know, like you're, you're putting yourself down for even acknowledging that something like that's going on in your life. And it can be very difficult to tell people and to talk about, you know these things but you know if you are suffering domestic abuse what contact options are available and let's talk about let's try and talk about what immediate contact options are available if you're trying to you know like the, get hold of someone quickly like the domestic abuse helpline the next door app and things like that and let's also talk about if you just want to discreetly in your own time go somewhere and actually report it um you know without it being you know obvious to anyone and, and and as I said in an anonymous way perhaps let's, let's try and talk about that Freya please. Well the, there are lots of different ways I mean obviously if you're in immediate fear you should call the police 999 straightforward um, in the usual way um, as you know there is a domestic abuse 24-hour helpline 08 200 I just want to repeat that Freya so it's 0808 200 0247 um, and there's and also, if you, up. yes, yeah. sorry, I was just sorry. going to say, you if, can, if, if, can press the, the Attorney General um, rem reminded everybody about this, didn't she? In her yes, recent, she did. Um, yes. Suella Braverman MP. Um, yeah, she was reassuring everyone, you know, that during the, you're not going to be breaching COVID um, guidelines or anything at all if you um, choose to get out of a domestic relationship um, that's abusive and she said uh call 999 and if you press 55 you don't have to speak because it may well be a situation where you can't actually say anything yes. if you press 999 and then 55 uh the police will take note and assume it's a domestic abuse incident um yes. and um like you say there are quite a few apps now um the next next door app um that people often look on for sort of local services and things at the moment has a link to the Met Police app um, and um, the Met Police have um, a very quick exit button uh, that you can press. The Met Police uh, app is, it, uh, link is a really useful one because it has links 
to um, quite a lot of information. You can find your local police centre. Um, you can, it explains what domestic abuse is. Um, it gives you quite a lot of very helpful advice. And um, it also has um, a link to um, trying to find out information from the police under Claire's Law, which I think is something we're going to, to talk about because um, Claire's Law, I think, is a very under, misunderstood uh, part of the law and it's very underused both by victims and their families and also by uh, members of the public as well as lawyers um, because, um, as you know, Claire's Law um, happened after a horrific... Uh, murder in 2009 by um, a lady called Claire Wood and her father campaigned <clears throat> um, for a change in the law so that the police can disclose information uh, yes. about um, people who have previous history with the police uh, in domestic abuse cases um, and in 2014 it finally became law and it does give the right to um, not just the victim to ask for that information from the police, but also very importantly, from family or close friends. And um, so if you are in a situation where you have some suspicions and worries about a friend, for example, or a family member, then you should in fact um, invoke Claire's Law. Um, the perpetrator won't know that you've done it. And um, basically on the Met, police website it has a link so you can do that application um, and it's called the domestic violence disclosure scheme dvds um, and uh, they can give you that information obviously it's only going to show up people who have been already reported to the police yes so the fact that have a previous history, history that has been recorded yes that there isn't domestic abuse happening in that relationship but it can be very useful because the reality is if somebody has um a history of domestic abuse in previous relationships they're not going to change unless they've had um, professional help and they actually want to change they're not going to um, and so um, it's quite a good predictor for um, their likely behavior in the future if they don't seek professional help I, I tell you you could probably maybe you're entering into a new relationship I mean without sounding funny there's so many online dating apps and p meeting points and yeah. again it's something I've read periodically uh, you know in the news where people have met up via um, an app and, and 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 the person seems wonderful and then something really horrific happens and and recently I remember um, there was where where somebody was attracting men into his his home for relationships and killing them and he was yeah. finally caught I mean you might want to look somebody up that you've just met without having been introduced or even if you've been introduced you know and yeah. say well gosh has this person got any previous but uh, the other thing is that I would like to mention because we are running out of time is that Boots have recently created safe places to go in and ask a member of staff at the counter to use. And it's, they've created consultation rooms where you will be able to get ad, uh, advice and help um, on, on domestic abuse matters. So that's in Boots Chemists. And I think that's, that's brilliant. brilliant. I just think, you know, Absolutely. really, really brilliant. Yeah. Again, really brilliant. Okay, uh, Freya, we've got time to just very briefly, and I don't want to discuss anything briefly when it comes to this topic, but I'm going to hand it over to you. Let's discuss some myths in domestic abuse. Um, yeah. And we've literally got three or four minutes to do that. What can we yeah. say to our listeners about that? Well, there, there really ought to be a Me Too movement for domestic abuse. It's really about time because um, that's obviously done a lot for sexual harassment um, and sexual abuse cases um, yes. worldwide. There, really, there needs to be one. The government's really aware of this and the need for education and um, for people to really understand it because it's really time for, for those people who read the papers and think, oh no, another murder of a mother, why did she? Um, why didn't she just Stick leave? Around, the relationship? Yep. Um, yep. It's, it's, quite a, it's, it's very important for people to be properly educated about this subject. Um, there are very good reasons why people don't leave. It's not that they're stupid. When they start the relationship, the person isn't an obvious domestic abuse perpetrator. They tend to be, in fact, very often extremely charming. Um, yes. Quite often very well respected from the outside world. And, and I just want to say on that point, Freya, that actually sometimes when somebody goes and tells a friend or a family member that they are being abused, sometimes they say, what, that per what the person you're in a relationship? No, I'd never imagine that. I mean, we, I think... <laughs> Yeah. you know in the that's past we've perhaps told. you know yeah. and, and and that's very key and then they don't leave because there is genuine there are genuine reasons for, for people to be very very 
for instance, um, because there's a huge danger in leaping. The, mur the murder of women is one of the commonest statistics um, in murders um, by partners or ex-partners. And 55% of the women who are killed are generally killed within the first month of leaving. And 87% oh are killed in the first year of leaving. Goodness That's census. So it is extremely dangerous. Victims often find themselves very isolated. <clears throat> um, the perpetrator is often helped to um, make their friends and family turn against them. Um, they find it very often very difficult to even recognise that they are being abused because they might even they might even have, have the perpetrator have something against them. So they you know you sh they know uh, yeah. uh, something very personal yeah. to you. Yeah, that's right. That's and right. That, you know, and, and we've talked about that. It, you know, that sort of you know blackmail black behaviour. It is, that's right. And um, very often the victim becomes very dependent on their controlling partner. I mean, to the point where they feel incapable of really doing anything without them because they've been chaperoned by them for so long and told they're so useless. They often feel very ashamed, they're in denial, they hope things will change. Um, they may have practical problems, they, they have children, they have very little money. Um, the uh, the perpetrator has all the money and um, they don't know anything about their finances they might be frightened of being deported um, but, but there is lots and lots of help up there Fred. I think that's what we need to say there's lots of help, and of help. women's aid um, and refuge are particularly fantastic this sort of thing but I just think it's so important for these myths about um, domestic abuse to be dispelled um, you know, that somebody is a good father, despite being a domestic abuser, for example, and this behaviour should therefore be tolerated. Um, we all heard Mark Fletcher, the MP, um, very recently on the yes. first, talking about the catastrophic effect it had on him growing up with an abusive stepfather. I thought this that is, was astonishing, I have to say. It affects the whole family. And the after effects of any um, abuse is awful. The atmosphere in the home can go on for a long, long time. Well, um, I always say, and I, I have always said to our clients, certainly, look, you know, if you're arguing, if things are very, very bad, don't think that by holding on to the relationship, you're doing the children a favor. Because certainly in my culture, I have really, really heard it from the elders, you know, when I was a young child, oh, we stayed, stayed together for the children, you know, but you're staying together. And what are you creating for the children? A nightmare and a abusive environment which is going to affect them potentially for the rest of their yeah. lives you're not doing them any favors and i've always said it's better to have two separate parties that can or, you know have a civilized uh, yes. uh, uh, relationship rather than saying oh we're staying together for the children that doesn't doesn't do them any favors but freya we have now run out of time and i have to say what another absolutely useful informative and great podcast and i just want to say to our listeners that we've already discussed a part three and me and Freya have already discussed that in our part three of domestic violence during the crisis we want to discuss the law changes that are being talked about in parliament in covid for domestic abuse um, and there's some very interesting points that Freya was um, keeping me informed about in relation to tagging potentially coming into uh, the consequences of domestic abuse also lie detector tests so Freya Thank you so, so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Hattie. Lovely to see you. And what I will say to our listeners is don't forget to click and subscribe to our podcasts. And you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and LinkedIn by searching Get Legally Speaking. Also visit our website at getlegallyspeaking.com. Stay safe, keep well and thank you for listening.